above the clouds. 126. The sun's annual journey from tropic to tropic, solstice to solstice, is what determines the length and character of days, nights, and seasons. This is why equatorial regions experience almost year-round summer and heat, while higher latitudes north, and especially south, experience more distinct seasons with harsh winters. The heliocentric model claims seasons change based on the ball Earth's alleged axial tilt and elliptical orbit around the sun, yet their flawed current model places us closest to the sun, 91 million miles, in January, when it is actually winter, and farthest from the sun, 94.5 million miles, in July, when it's actually summer throughout most of the Earth. 127. The fact that the sun and moon's reflections on water always form a straight line path from the horizon to the observer proves the Earth is not a ball. If the Earth's surface was curved, it would be impossible for the reflected light to curve over the ball from horizon to observer. 128. There are huge centuries-old stone sundials and moon dials all over the world which still tell the time now down to the minute as perfectly as the day they were made. If the Earth, Sun, and Moon were truly subject to the number of contradictory, revolving, rotating, wobbling, and spiraling motions claimed by modern astronomy, it would be impossible for these monuments to so accurately tell time without constant adjustment. 129. To quote William Carpenter, why in the name of common sense should observers have to fix their telescopes on solid stone bases so that they should not move a hair's breadth? if the earth on which they fix them moves at the rate of 19 miles in a second. Indeed, to believe that 6,000 million 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 tons is rolling, surging, flying, darting on through space forever with a velocity compared with which a shot from a cannon is a very slow coach, with such unerring accuracy that a telescope fixed on granite pillars in an observatory will not enable a lynx-eyed astronomer to detect a variation in its onward motion of the thousandth part of a hair's breadth is to conceive a miracle compared with which all the miracles on record put together would sink into utter insignificance since we can, in middle north latitudes, see the North Star on looking out of a window that faces it, and out of this very same corner of the very same pane of glass in the very same window all the year round, it is proof enough for any man in his senses that we have not made any motion at all and that the Earth is not a globe. 130. From Earth Not a Globe by Samuel Robotham. Take two carefully bored metallic tubes, not less than six feet in length, and place them one yard asunder on the opposite sides of a wooden frame, or a solid block of wood or stone, so adjust them that their centers or axes of vision shall be perfectly parallel to each other. Now direct them to the plane of some notable fixed star a few seconds previous to its meridian time. Let an observer be stationed at each tube, and the moment the star appears in the first tube, let a loud knock or other signal be given to be repeated by the observer at the second tube when he sees the same star. A distinct period of time will elapse between the signals given. The signals will follow each other in very rapid succession, but still, the time between is sufficient to show that the same star is not visible at the same moment by two parallel lines of sight when only one yard asunder. A slight inclination of the second tube towards the first tube would be required for the star to be seen through both tubes at the same instant. Let the tubes remain in their positions for six months, at the end of which time the same observation or experiment will produce the same results. The star will be visible at the same meridian time without the slightest alteration being required in the direction of the tubes, from which it is concluded that if the Earth had moved one single yard in an orbit through space, there would at least be observed the slight inclination of the tube which the difference in position of one yard had previously required. But as no such difference in the direction of the tube is required, the conclusion is unavoidable that in six months a given meridian upon the Earth's surface does not move a single yard, and therefore that the Earth has not the slightest degree of orbital motion. 131. NASA and modern astronomy maintain that the moon is a solid, spherical, Earth-like habitation which man has actually flown to and set foot on. They claim the moon is a non-luminescent planetoid which receives and reflects all its light from the sun. The reality is, however, that the moon is observably not a solid body. It is clearly circular, but not spherical, and not in any way an Earth-like planetoid which humans could set foot on. In fact, the moon has been proven largely transparent and completely self-luminescent, shining with its own unique light. 132. 
The sun's light is golden, warm, drying, preservative, and antiseptic, while the moon's light is silver, cool, damp, putrefying, and septic. The sun's rays decrease the combustion of a bonfire, while the moon's rays increase combustion. Plant and animal substances exposed to sunlight quickly dry, shrink, coagulate, and lose the tendency to decompose and putrefy. Grapes and other fruits become solid, partially candied and preserved, like raisins, dates, and prunes. Animal flesh coagulates, loses its volatile, gaseous constituents, becomes firm, dry, and slow to decay. When exposed to moonlight, however, plant and animal substances tend to show symptoms of putrefaction and decay. This proves that sun and moonlight are different, unique, and opposites, as they are in the geocentric flat model. 133. In direct sunlight, a thermometer will read higher than another thermometer placed in the shade. But in full direct moonlight, a thermometer will read lower than another placed in the shade. If the sun's light is collected in a large lens and thrown to a focus point, it can create significant heat, while the moon's light collected similarly creates no heat. In the Lancet Medical Journal from March 14, 1856, particulars are given of several experiments which prove the moon's rays, when concentrated, can actually reduce the temperature upon a thermometer more than 8 degrees, so sunlight and moonlight clearly have altogether different properties. 134. Furthermore, the moon itself cannot physically be both a spherical body and a reflector of the sun's light. Reflectors must be flat or concave for light rays to have any angle of incidence. If a reflector's surface is convex, then every ray of light points in a direct line with the radius perpendicular to the surface, resulting in no reflection. 135. Not only is the moon clearly self-luminescent, shining its own unique light, but it is also largely transparent. When the waxing or waning moon is visible during the day, it is possible to see the blue sky right through the moon. And on a clear night, during a waxing or waning cycle, it is even possible to occasionally see stars and planets directly through the surface of the moon. The Royal Astronomical Society has on record many such occurrences throughout history which all defy the heliocentric model. 136. Many people think that modern astronomy's ability to accurately predict lunar and solar eclipses is a result and proof positive of the heliocentric theory of the universe. The fact of the matter, however, is that eclipses have been accurately predicted by cultures worldwide for thousands of years before the heliocentric ball earth was even a glimmer in Copernicus's imagination. Ptolemy, in the first century AD, accurately predicted eclipses for 600 years on the basis of a flat stationary earth with equal position as anyone living today. All the way back in 600 BC, Thales accurately predicted an eclipse which ended the war between the Medes and the Lydians. Eclipses happen regularly with precision in 18-year cycles, so regardless of geocentric or heliocentric flat or globe-earth cosmologies, eclipses can be accurately calculated independent of such factors. 137. Another assumption and supposed proof of the Earth's shape, heliocentrists claim that lunar eclipses are caused by the shadow of the ball Earth occulting the Moon. They claim the Sun, Earth, and Moon spheres perfectly align like three billiard balls in a row so that the Sun's light casts the Earth's shadow onto the Moon. Unfortunately for heliocentrists, this explanation is rendered completely invalid due to the fact that lunar eclipses have happened and continue to happen regularly when both the Sun and Moon are still visible together above the horizon. For the Sun's light to be casting Earth's shadow onto the Moon, the three bodies must be aligned in a straight 180 degree syzygy, but as early as the time of Pliny, there are records of lunar eclipses happening while both the Sun and Moon are visible in the sky. Therefore, the eclipser of the moon cannot be the Earth or Earth's shadow, and some other explanation must be sought. 138. Another favorite proof of ball earthers is the appearance from an observer on shore of ships' hulls being obfuscated by the water and disappearing from view when sailing away towards the horizon. Their claim is that ships' hulls disappear before their mastheads because the ship is beginning its declination around the convex curvature of the ball earth. Once again, however, their hasty conclusion is drawn from a faulty premise, namely that only on a ball earth could this phenomenon occur. The fact of the matter is that the law of perspective on plane surfaces dictates and necessitates the exact same occurrence. For example, a girl wearing a dress walking away towards the horizon will appear to sink into the earth the farther away she walks. Her feet will disappear from view first, and the distance between the ground and the bottom of her dress will gradually diminish until, after a half a mile, it seems like her dress is touching the ground as she walks on invisible legs. 
such is the case on plane surfaces. The lowest parts of objects receding from a given point of observation necessarily disappear before the highest. 139. Not only is the disappearance of ships' hulls explained by the law of perspective on flat surfaces, it is proven undeniably true with the aid of a good telescope. If you watch a ship sailing away into the horizon with the naked eye until its hull has completely disappeared from view under the supposed curvature of the earth, then look through a telescope, you will notice the entire ship quickly zooms back into view, hull and all, proving that the disappearance was caused by the law of perspective, not by a wall of curved water. This also proves that the horizon is simply the vanishing line of perspective from your point of view, not the alleged curvature of the Earth. 140. Foucault's pendulums are often quoted as proof of a rotating Earth, but upon closer investigation prove the opposite. To begin with, Foucault's pendulums do not uniformly swing in any one direction. Sometimes they rotate clockwise and sometimes counterclockwise. Sometimes they fail to rotate and sometimes they rotate far too much. The behavior of the pendulum actually depends on 1. the initial force beginning its swing, and 2. the ball and socket joint, which most readily facilitates circular motion over any other. The supposed rotation of the earth is completely inconsequential and irrelevant to the pendulum's swing. If the alleged constant rotation of the earth affected pendulums in any way, then there should be no need to manually start pendulums in motion. If the Earth's diurnal rotation caused the 360-degree uniform diurnal rotation of pendulums, then there should not exist a stationary pendulum anywhere on Earth. 141. The Coriolis effect is often said to cause sinks and toilet bowls in the northern hemisphere to drain spinning in one direction, while in the southern hemisphere causing them to spin the opposite way, thus providing proof of the spinning ball Earth. Once again, however, just like Foucault's pendulums spinning either which way, sinks and toilets in the northern and southern hemispheres do not consistently spin in any one direction. Sinks and toilets in the very same household are often found to spin opposite directions, depending entirely upon the shape of the basin and the angle of the water's entry, not the supposed rotation of the Earth. 142. People claim that if the Earth were flat, they should be able to use a telescope and see clear across the oceans. This is absurd, however, as the air is full of precipitation, especially over the oceans, and especially at the lowest, densest layer of atmosphere, is not transparent. Picture the blurry haze over roads on hot, humid days. Even the best telescope will blur out long before you could see across an ocean. You can, however, use a telescope to zoom in much more of our flat Earth than would be possible on a ball 25,000 miles in circumference. 143. People claim that if the Earth were flat, with the sun circling over and around us, we should be able to see the sun from everywhere, all over the earth, and there should be daylight, even at night time. Since the sun is not 93 million miles away, but rather just a few thousand, and shining down like a spotlight, once it has moved significantly far enough away from your location, it becomes invisible beyond the horizon, and daylight slowly fades until it completely disappears. If the sun were 93 million miles away and the earth a spinning ball, the transition from daylight to night would instead be almost instantaneous as you passed the Terminator line. 144. Pictures of the moon appearing upside down in the southern hemisphere and right side up in the north are often cited as proof of the ball earth, but once again upon closer inspection provide another proof of the flat model. In fact, Time-lapse photography shows the moon itself turns clockwise like a wheel as it circles over and around the Earth. You can find pictures of the moon at 360 degrees of various inclination from all over the Earth, simply depending on where and when the picture was taken. 145. Heliocentrists believe the moon is a ball, even though its appearance is clearly that of a flat luminous disk. We only ever see the same one face, albeit at various inclinations, of the moon. Yet it is claimed that there is another dark side of the moon which remains hidden. NASA states the moon spins opposite the spin of the Earth in such a perfectly synchronized way that the motions cancel each other out, so we will conveniently never be able to observe the supposed dark side of the moon outside of their terrible fake CGI images. The fact of the matter is, however, if the moon were a sphere, observers in Antarctica would see a different face from those at the equator, yet they do not. Just the same flat face rotated at various degrees. 146. The ball Earth model claims the moon orbits around the Earth once every 28 days, 